Hello everybody, this is Metal Percussion Chapter 2. We're going to be looking at cymbals, gongs, and tam-tams. Uh, we're going to start with tam-tams, which are the really large gongs. They're maybe about this big. I don't have one here, but I'm sure you've seen them and heard them before. Um, you usually play those with a really big mallet, and I understand that inside those mallets are often a couple hockey pucks, which are very dense rubber. So. The point is, um, the size and density and weight of the mallet is always in um, proportion to the um, size and weight of the instrument that you're striking. So the large tam-tams are going to take a really heavy beater. I actually have some very cool gongs at home. Um, technically, the, a tam-tam, I believe, is flat, and a gong might have a raised center, but we, we can kind of use those terms interchangeably. Um, here is a gong I have. I'm going to use um, kind of a medium yarn mallet, and I'm going to try to I'm going to play it in several places, and you can hear how the sound changes depending on where I strike it. One thing you can do with one of these gongs is make special effects. If you take a triangle beater and you slide it on the edge, you can get the sound effect for like a scary film or something like that. Um, now that you've heard the largest of the gongs that I have, we're going to get a little smaller here. I really like this one. This has beautiful resonance. Again, I'm going to play it in the center and off center as well so you can hear the different sounds. So here's the center. <laughs> Here's off center. And you get a little bit of kind of like a splash or spread in that one. Um, I'm holding it up like this, but of course you can also hang it on a, a, a cymbal stand if you have a boom stand or something, so you don't have to actually hold it while you play it. You can also get a rack and string them up on that as well. Here's another one. This is unusual because it doesn't really have a rim on it. It's completely flat. I'm going to make sure and use my smallest mallet for this one. This next one is a special kind of gong. This is called the stroke boss, the middle part where you strike it. Um, on the ones that have the raised center, we call those button gongs, and if you strike them in the center, you're going to hear um, a distinct pitch. In general, uh, tam-tams or the rest of these gongs I've played have um, sort of an amorphous pitch, not really a central one, um, but the ones with the button will have a single pitch. This one has a special characteristic because it's particularly flat here. It's not just the natural curve of the metal. And this is called a Chinese opera gong. I would use this for a special effect. I don't know if I would use it all the time, but it's interesting. It has a special sound. I'm going to see if I can find that. I'm going to change my mallet to slightly harder. is created because of that uh, flat surface. Um, I understand that they use these in Chinese opera. It's also interesting that the Chinese language is a tonal language, so the, uh, the pitch of the words that they say, if, if that changes, it changes the meaning of the words. Um, so it's interesting that the gongs that they have also change pitch, just like the African talking drum changes pitch along with the African languages, which are often tonal. One last kind of gong, and this one's not flat, this is called a Chinese cup gong, or you may know it as a singing bowl. So if you, if you hold it light, lightly with your fingertips, you can strike it. It has a lovely um, ringing sound. Uh, if you can experiment a little bit and you have the right kind of beater, you can strike it and then rub the beater around. To make it to continue to sing. All right, so those, that's gongs and tam-tams. We're gonna move on to cymbals now, and these are basically um, suspended cymbals that I'm gonna use. Um, the anatomy of a cymbal, as you may know, 
there are three parts. There's the bell, the bow, and the edge, and they have distinct sounds. several types of symbols here. I would call this a, a suspended or a ride symbol, for example. Um, this is a specialty symbol called a Chinese symbol. It has a flanged edge, so it has a particularly crashy sound. And here I have a splash symbol, which is very small. take, uh, for example, a rhythm like the jazz ride beat, which goes like this. All right, I'm going to play it with different implements. And that's one of the cool things about cymbals is that you can play it, play them with a number of different things um, and get different sounds depending on the, the tone quality or the volume that you want. So uh, typically we might play a suspended cymbal like this or a ride cymbal with a stick. And I'm going to play with the tip of the stick. Here's a stick bundle. And here's a brush. Um, if you'd like to roll on the cymbal, which means making it sustain, I'll start with the brushes and then I'll move to the standard, which would be um, yarn. You can alternate back and forth your single stroke roll. I would play on opposite edges. Of a neat sound. You could scrape it. And this is called a mandolin roll. If you put some of the brushes on the top and some of the brush underneath the cymbal. Uh, for um, nice crescendos, you can use a pair of uh, yarn mallets on the cymbal. I would play on opposite sides to get the whole thing to resonate. And you can make a little bit of a crescendo and then let it ring. special effect, you can take a triangle beater and scrape it. And something else you might do on a suspended cymbal to um, change the sound is you can, it's called open and close, and if you look at notation it's like a plus sign and a, and a zero, little zero. Uh, you could play again that same ride beat. clasping the uh, cymbal and opening and closing the sound or dampening it while you're playing the pattern. <laughs> 